Okay, welcome to the first episode of Talking, Talking Shop. Shop. Um, my name's Anthony Chesworth. My name's Mike McEwen. Um, and we're here at the EK Med office and what we wanted to try to do is to talk about some of the, some of the new stories, stuff that's in the news that may affect or might be of interest to anyone who's got a small yeah, business. Yeah, um, and of, of course we, we keep up to date with sort of industry trends, new things that are happening in the industry. Some try the, to. Yeah, try to some of the bad things that are happening in the industry. So if we thought if we can condense it down into a quick 20 minute, half an hour programme for you guys to, to watch. If you like it, we'll carry on doing it. Um, and I'm sure Anthony might have some special guests in future episodes as well. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just an informal, uh, an informal chat, really. Um, yeah. was, we, we didn't want to do it like a, you know, like a news type, studio type no. thing. It's just a bit of an informal chat. So, so should we crack on? We'll and crack have on with through? the first one. So the first topic that we, we came across was with regards to surge pricing in supermarkets. And uh, what we mean by surge pricing is basically they're getting away with your, your sort of standard price gun type thing and your tickets on, on the shelf and replacing it with LCD displays. Yeah, well, I've seen these in France. They've been doing it in France for years. They've been doing it in France for years, so it, it's, it's, it's nothing new, I guess, to the guys in Europe, but for it, for it to come over here, I guess, is yeah, well, it'll be a completely different thing and it'll, I guess it'll revolutionise the way that you but do But I can't understand why that's never come to the UK before. Because it's, it's actually, when you think about it, it's a really clever way of doing it. Because it, it, basically, so what it is, is in your supermarket, rather than having a thousand or you know, 10,000 items all with the prices yeah. on, it's an LCD display yeah. and they can push the changes out. So if the head office, they decide that bread's going up 10p, they make a change at head office so, and it goes up. And they can do it based on region, location, right. time of day as well. And I think traditionally in the UK, the sort of people that, that, that do that, uh, you know, the, the people are running around with the price guns and that sort of thing, but it's potentially gonna gonna put these guys out of a job, which I don't know if that's something someone's considered because. Well, know, it must be labour intensive going around doing that. Of course, it's yeah, definitely. That, it's definitely. it's a full-time it? job, you know. If you think in terms of of merchandising and that sort of thing, going around pricing stuff up, that that is a full-time job. So. It, but do you think, do you think, it's, do you think it's a good thing or a bad? Thing? Because obviously, I don't when, know, when you, know. you read the article, I don't know. Obviously. It, it, it talks about even people like Amazon and people like that in that... Surge pricing isn't new in the world of, uh, in, in e-commerce, it's not new. Well, because basically yeah. what, they, what they can do with this is that at five o'clock or something, when there's that rush on for tea time, they can put, yeah. the, price, they can put the prices up. Uh, Likewise, at lunchtime, they can put the prices up, whereas... Out of the, which, or down, on, or down for a lunchtime. Yeah, so but we all know they, the way it's going to go, because it's exactly like well, surge pricing, like, say, on Uber. Uber and things the, the, like the, the price goes up yeah, based yeah. on demand. Yeah. So it's a hot day, a hot, beautiful day, the prices of barbecues are going to go up. But you think about it, though, the, the, the prices will go down in some respects as well, because if you think perishable items, for example, fruit and veg, you know, if they need to get rid of that stuff, usually it's a person running around putting whoopsie stickers on everything in Asda. But how would you feel, it? I suppose it brings the question, you know, to bring this a little bit onto online stuff as well, how do you feel the fact that I could go online, I could go into a supermarket and pay a pound for something, whereas you go on and you pay five pounds for something because it's decided... Well, I, I, I've that actually made a note more. of that, yeah, because I, I, think, I think it is going to cause conflict at the checkout and the tills and things like that. And, I do think it's going to cause conflict. And I think with online shopping particularly, there's that many sort of data points for, for people. And I mean, Google knows everything about you. Amazon knows everything about you. You know, they don't know how much disposable income you've got. And well, this is, like, the, well, this is this. the scary thing. It's they like when you, when you talk to people, I mean, I, I mean, I even talk about this to people if they have an online shop, that what they can actually do is through Facebook marketing, because you can target yeah financial demographic data. So you can basically target people who've got money and people who yeah. haven't got money. So you could promote one product to people who've got money yeah. and the same product to people who haven't got money and, ch and charge different prices. I read and that's what this is, that's, this is what this is going to, isn't it? This is going to the point where if they feel you can, you can afford to pay more, yeah, they will yeah. charge you more. I read, I read an article where I think it was Expedia where I'm obviously moving away from sort of grocery shopping and that sort of stuff where Expedia, if you were using a Mac, to, to sort of to, to, to browse holidays, hotel rooms, or flights, whatever it is, the prices that were presented to you were 20, 30 percent more because you're using a Mac. Now I use a Mac, but I wouldn't pay 20, 30 percent more for something. But how would you know? How would you know? But how would you know? More? You wouldn't. And this is where this. I think this is where the conflict. Well, Amazon got into trouble in. with this, didn't it? Because people can't yes. complain that, that Uber have been in trouble with it. If you look at Uber, it's always surge pricing. You know, it. it 
with the tube strikes and things like that, and so what will happen? There'll be a tube strike, and Uber will go. Well, it happened, yes. it happened, it happened when the London bombings happened. Yeah, it did. But, it, but it's, it's an algorithm that does it, and yeah. Like when the tube strikes run, or even if something like that happens, like the bombings, it's an algorithm that does it, and it's actually doing what it should be doing. It's, yeah, it's, it's yeah, picking it's up the fact that there's correct. a surge going on. Yeah, yeah. That there's demand, so it's supply and demand, and so yeah, yeah. you know, if demand's outstripping supply, it puts the prices up to it, balances again. That's right. I mean, but it's going to be interesting, though. Is you know, let's say, I'll put that an example. I don't want to go back to holidays because a supermarket. If you bought, say, I don't know, a microwave and you paid 30 quid for it. And then, so let's say Anthony bought the microwave uh, every evening that evening and you know, they knew the supermarket was gonna busy. Um, so they put the price of this particular microwave on 30 quid. Then I went in at six o'clock in the morning, it was dead you know, and, it, and it was cheaper. You know, how would you feel about it? I'd, I'd, I'd be pretty but they, but Yeah, well you would, you <laughs> yeah, would but, but maybe, that's, maybe that's the change though. Maybe that's, I mean, I think in certain industries have accepted this. So we all know that if we were booking a flight, if me and you were booking a flight now to Milan, yeah. the chances of getting it for the same amount of money is slim to none. Yeah, and I think we've accepted that as, yeah, a, as, so. as, as a population. Online we've accepted, we have. Online we have. Yeah. Have we accepted it in yeah, the supermarket? Yeah, I don't know. I think we probably have. I think if, if, me and, if, I, if, if now we, we, we said we've got to go and book a holiday, I think... We would well. We won't be surprised if if we paid slightly different amounts. No, no. So it's, no, it's, take, it's, yeah, so it's yeah, taking, taking that the, mind shift and actually bringing that onto online and, and bringing it into into bricks and mortar. And is the, accepting that. And then the other point, though. So obviously you mentioned algorithms then, um, which is what's responsible for things like search price and the likes of Uber and Expedia and, 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 and Amazon or whatever. Is it going to be an algorithm? that does sort of the surges in supermarkets or is it going to be a person is it going to be an analyst that's well, i think it's going to be it's going i to think be it's a... going to be an algorithm isn't it Do you know yeah that'd be int- well, I, don't I think know. it'll be humans in it i think it will be an algorithm I'd be interested to see how it'll be able to pick up on the demand yeah and then then again is 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 this algorithm or whoever it is are they gonna are they gonna, are price is constantly going to shift throughout the day or you know is it going to be a daily thing or is it going to be one price if you go at 1 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, but it could drive the right behaviour, can't could, it, as well? I mean, it can drive the time. If, if, if you think, I mean, restaurants have been doing this now for a long while as well. Um, and even like hairdressers, beauty places, mm-hmm. things like that, to, to try to, to spread that demand over exactly. the day because they yeah. all have busy times. So, like a, right. a restaurant might have a lunchtime rush and a, an evening yeah. rush, but during the day, so they run offers to try to get you in. Yeah, so, it's like buy right. one, get exactly. one free. Mm-hmm. Does it, do, do, are you annoyed when you go to a restaurant where you know that had you been there? 10 minutes earlier you'd have got happy hour probably not because you probably no, accept yeah, it you accept it don't you except yeah. get one free on drinks when you go into a certain bar before a certain time yeah. I, I just think it's just that natural progression that we'll start to accept this stuff and, and actually I think mm. for retailers I think you've probably got to embrace this because you can charge different prices to yeah. customers based on where they are and what yeah. they're looking at and uh, one other thing that I want to mention as well and this isn't mentioned in any of the articles that I've, that I've read when we're sort of researching this um, is the environmental impact uh, because you think how many labels go towards pricing a product then if that particular product comes down in price then it's another label again so you know through the life cycle of a product while it's on the shelf it might have five or six different labels those five or six different labels across all the products I'll go to landfill. <laughs> is that really that big of a, well, what, for a me, little every label? Little, every little bit helps. Well, it's not just the little label, it's the point of sale stuff, you know, in terms of yeah, a, the, yeah, the, 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 the cardboard signs that, that these little LCD screens are going to replace. How many of those are in a supermarket? And how many supermarkets are there in, in, in the UK? Well, I always seen that, 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 that at restaurants where they have these you menus, know. beautiful menus printed. You've got to like, reprint them all the yeah, time. I mean, I know right. a lot now yeah. shifting to paper, aren't they? Yeah. Um, uh, but what, but what, what, do, what do you think? What do you think about this? Below. You know, comment below. Let yeah. us know what you think. Well, is this something that would benefit you? Is it, would it be negative as a retailer? Are you going to embrace this stuff on your online shop? Are you going to? Yeah. And I think I think you should I certainly should, try it. I think using definitely. Facebook marketing and having different products at different prices is definitely yeah. something you should be trying. I'm interested to see how this is going to play out. To be honest with you. Uh, yeah, it will be interesting. Uh, it will be interesting one. So that I guess that brings on to our next topic which is a personal favourite of mine um, which is drones drones um, being used in, in retail I guess I mean this particular article was on Tembe and it was how drones are being used for uh, click and collect and stock taking and yeah so these actually thing. whizzing around whizzing the warehouse around, yeah. going um, looking for products actually, uh, whizzing, imagine that and I can, I, can, I can see this working so so my background before I was at EKM I, I 
does. You, some, some may know, some may not. Is I, I worked in logistics, and obviously as part of that role, you're always around warehouses and stuff like that. Anyway, without going into too much detail, um, they would store product in what they call high bay, which is uh, it's exactly what it is. It's a warehouse, but rather than it taking up footprint it just it just goes up into the, it just goes up into the heavens um and you've got robots in there essentially picking products putting them in boxes shipping them out and i guess they're going to replace the robots with drones which you know it, again but it's going to be interesting but these drones they can only they, they can, can like locate them they can't certain, physically go and grab them well this is what this this article here is saying that they are going to grab them with, but, Interesting but, but, to see how it's going to work. Yeah, well, no, well, well, the size of the drone to be able to do that. I mean, the drone really can only can only carry, I think, five kilos or something like that. Anything heavier than that. I mean, I think they're going this way because I, I think following yeah. on from this, I think we, we, we'd be fools not to talk about drones. Oh, we've without... got, yeah, I think we've got conflicting um, uh, conflicting opinions when it comes yeah, so to talking yeah, about drone the, delivery. The drone delivery, because I don't for, think for it'll any happen. delivery and for any retailer, online shoppers, I'm sure anyone watching this has appreciated that last mile. The call it Everyone to, to it. get from yes, the local it. depot to that person's yeah. street is the nightmare it's it a is. horrible it bit is. and it's why you end up with people throwing parcels over your back fence yeah, yeah. all the bad experiences we've all gone to is because that getting older someone is very difficult yeah it's difficult and so the drone thing would solve that it would but i don't think it's ever going to happen and i, I People are going to disagree with me. Well, with I disagree. This. I disagree. Anthony I disagree, disagree with, with that. I think it is going to happen. Personally, and, and these are my reasons for it. And obviously, being a drone pilot, extra an, ex, an extra drone pilot. <laughs> yeah, this is this <laughs> is the problem. Crash Mark, crashed. Mark, Mark crashed a drone very recently. Twice. In, Twice. Yeah. So I'll tell you the story. Is and I actually hold. He came responsible for this accident. <laughs> it was nothing to do with pilot error whatsoever. Um, it basically flew itself into. Uh, it flew in, itself. It <laughs> flew itself. Into, it flew yeah, itself. but that could have been a person. That could have been a person. And you think if this was exactly, delivering an Amazon a package? Pilot. Yeah, well, yeah, true. But anyway, you, you crashed the I drone. Cra I you crashed it's the always drone. pilot error. I crashed the drone. As the drone is no more. Uh, and then the same night, I took a smaller drone that I had out. Um, for, for a flight, um, not had it out for a while, it was going to be a serve as a replacement for the big one. There were a big clop of thunder and it, and it vanished. I don't think it got vaporised <laughs> by lightning, but I never found it. But it was anyway. a sign from the but gods. But it was a sign from the gods. That your piloting I'll, days are I'll over. I'll stick to e-commerce and yeah, leave the drone. Yeah. But what, yeah, the reasons for saying that drone delivery will never take off is it, it, it will for delivering to remote areas and things like that. I think if you deliver into offshore islands or um, rural areas, they, they will be used. And uh, uh, they're used now um, sort of in disaster zones to deliver aid and medicines. Yeah, and they have used things them to like deliver that. stuff, haven't they? Yeah. The reason they won't work in a built-up metropolitan area is simply because of the buildings and, and high-rise skyscrapers. The mapping isn't there yet as such. Yeah, but it will be. It will It will not there, It's not there yet. It's not there yet, but I, that's I, not to say... For you to make that judgment saying that it will not happen... Where are they going to deliver? If, 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 if it's making a delivery to, say, the Shard in London, yeah. where is it going to deliver well, it to? Well, it's going to deliver to receptions same as a post postman yeah, is sure but how, how how is it going to do that but well, you, you're land. looking at to, to allow drones to deliver you're looking at changing entire infrastructures in terms of building landing pads building no sig you, no it's it, not it, going to be like it, you it, look at the jetsons it, 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 the jetsons it, it, yeah but yeah but you're like no if, if i if i wanted like right now i think i, I want a mars bar or something i hmm. want to be able to go on go on an online shop now an ecam shop buy a mars bar and then literally a bit like an Uber thing, it shows me where it is, and literally, it, and it lands out here, and I just grab it. I, I, that's what I wanted. That's that, what I that would, that that's... would work somewhere like this, because, but in, in where where it's in more where it's demanded the most in 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 sort of metropolitan areas, so like central London, central Manchester, it won't work. Yeah, but There's too many buildings, the 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 buildings change so far. I mean, we can debate this for hours, so maybe that maybe we should debate this again at another time. Well, on this could go on and on and on forever, because I, I think it is, um, and I think, it, I think it's it going to make online shopping so much better as well. I think you're more likely to have a delivery from a driverless vehicle being yeah, car and van yeah, than a drone. A drone and a driverless, a drone on, on wheels, yeah, there, there could be a mixture of the two. Yeah, okay, so, so um, by drone, I've, yeah, so you get a drone delivery, so if you class a drone as a flying machine, I always class it as a flying machine. You're quite mm. right, they come with it wheels as well. So yeah, I do believe that um, driverless cars and vans will be delivering stuff yeah. before you're gonna have a, a drone well, flying what, 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 do, what, what do you, do you think? think? Um, let, us, let us know, comment below. comment below. I think it'd be a massive thing for online retail, but 
We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. So the next one is a big one. I think we've probably all seen in the news we've got is this. Massive fine that Google got, basically. So two point one billion pounds. First thing I'll say about this: Who the heck has come up with that figure, two point one billion? I don't know. It, it, That's it must be crazy. It's crazy. And th and this fine is for the EU. Don't like the fact that Google is prioritising its own shopping services above Over above other competitors, services. which yeah. I, I suppose yeah, it's a fair noble a thing. But to find that kind of money, and also. The question is, and I don't know where my, I, I don't really have an answer because I don't know which side of the fence I sit on no, on, on this specific one. I what, what I do think though is, I, I get the monopolies and all this, this sort of stuff, but I, I don't like when governments or agencies start messing around with stuff they don't understand. Yeah. So who is it in the EU that, this, it, it, is there a little department there that decides, oh well, this, this business or this thing's doing, too, <laughs> it's too good of it's a service, we need to make it a bit yeah. more rubbish. Because that's what this is actually doing, because all Google are actually trying to do is, when you search for something, it wants to deliver that best result possible to you. Yeah. And they've said, Larry Page, people have said, their ideal dream with Google is to deliver one result. That's what it wants yeah, to deliver. Yeah, ultimately, and so, yeah. what, when it gets to that point where you ask it a question and it has the answer exactly right for you, the EU's going to say, oh no, you must show other answers because it is not fair on it. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, who's come up with a figure of 2.1 billion? What's that based on? I can't find anything to sort of justify that sort of figure. I think they'll pay it. That was my next question. I mean, obviously, I think they've got 90 days now to sort of yeah, contest it, haven't they? When I looked into this, and though, then, I think the EU, the last five big companies, it's fine. So it's, I know it's done Microsoft, it's done Google, it's done Facebook. Of the five not, big ones, it's fine. It. On, only it. one of them no. has ever <laughs> paid it. Everyone else goes, no, nah, not, no. I mean, do you think, are they going to pay it? I think they're going to debate it till, you know, the hell freezes over, to be honest with you. Um, uh, again, I don't think anybody knows. I don't think anyone knows if they're going to pay it. Do you think it's a good thing or a bad it. thing? For I'm, on the fence. I'm, on the I'm on the fence, for you, to be honest. I, I've asked a lot. I've asked a lot recently. I, I've been asking a lot of EKM customers, what? people I know, and, and everyone's a bit... Um, they, they, maybe they are prior, prior, prioritising their own paid-for stuff content over everyone else's, but is it the best content? That's not been mentioned anywhere. No. It might have been, yeah, it might have been promoted. And Google Shopping is else. open to a lot of other, pe a of lot of other people. Of course it is. Yeah, and, you know, I've, for, for me, it, it, it's all about this 2.1 billion, and, and the argument that's presented is, is an, a, it's not a good argument well, it's, it, it's, a, it's, it's the not, same argument as the argument they used a long time ago, Microsoft, that they didn't like the fact that Microsoft was dominant no. in operating systems, and therefore, it was promoting Internet Explorer, it was dominant in that area. So you think this now, is knocking them down a peg, perhaps? Yeah, but it had no effect anyway because Microsoft knocked themselves down because a better yeah. product came out in, 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 in the shape of like yeah. Google Chrome and it took that industry. Yeah. And also what Microsoft did at the time is by having that monopoly around the world, they standardised it and meant everyone could develop software that ran on every PC. Yes, yes. By Google Shopping being there, everyone knows there's this one ad platform to put your products on. The yeah. minute that that changes and you end up with 20 or 30, imagine for a company like us, we'd have to have mm. like 20 or 30 integrations with other shopping yeah, platforms. And as, an en as a shop owner, mm. you're going to have to manage those feeds into 20 or 30 different... Yeah, yeah, no, I see what you're saying. But then quite equally, I get, I get the fact that then if it's only one player, there's no competition and they can set their prices. Yeah, so I mean, I think they've been looking at this for seven years now or something like that. So this has been on the, on, on the radar for a while, Does Google it? have as much clout as it once did? Because now no, with Facebook... I don't believe, I don't this, believe this, it does. This naturally I don't happens. It it's the idea of government no. interfering with something. That the, the natural balance will happen anyway because Facebook yeah. is hitting Google anyway. Well, the competitors will come and hit it. And I think sometimes they cry over spilt milk in that yeah. you see the EU and, and the governments like mourning about like Google doing this, Google doing that, Google not paying this tax or Starbucks mm. not paying it. All these companies, where they cry over spilt milk, what they should be worrying about is how do we get companies that can compete Pete with these guys, with these guys so they don't have the monopoly. No, I agree. Yeah, that's, what, that's, what, that's, what, the, that's what the thing oh. should be. It shouldn't be. No. You're crying over spilt milk. So mm. how could we encourage businesses in the EU to develop a product that would compete and be better With than Google. Better. And I think you've just raised a really, really good point, and I know it's something you and I have discussed previously, prior to this fine, and, and is are Google as big as they once were? And I think f from experience and Obviously, we do, you know we we yeah, deal yeah. with Google, so you know so so we know perhaps better than most. Uh, I would say they're not as big 
as, as they used to be. Uh, and I think they've realised that and they've changed the way that they conduct themselves in the marketplace, certainly. And I've seen differences, and I think you probably have as well. And that is down to the yeah. likes of Facebook. And, so you know, I, what, what do you think? Is it a good thing or a bad thing for online retailers? Did, let us know in the comments below. Comments below. Um, is it going to be good for your business or bad if Google Shopping disappeared? Sort of bringing us on to our last topic now, something a little bit light-hearted, is happy 50th birthday to the cash machine. Woo. And the first cash machine was opened in Enfield, North London, uh, which I used to frequently, I used to live in London, so I'd probably use the machine. Uh, <laughs> I'd probably point, use the machine. <laughs> which is interesting. <laughs> they need to put one of them. I have fond <laughs> memories of using that machine. But do you know what, now in London, it's sort of commonplace to put these round <laughs> plaques with who used to live in this house, they need to do that with the cash machine. <laughs> Here lies the first cash machine hole in the wall. Do you know what ATM actually stands for? Yeah, it automated telemachine. Yeah. Telem yeah. Um, but I guess, so a cash machine, I still use a cash machine. Uh, I always like to carry cash on me. Anthony on the other hand, I don't think I don't like using cash, carry, carry no, cash no. And, I, I'd quite a like to see the back of cash. I mean, just, just saying about the story about, uh, it's relevant this morning with the tooth fairy situation. Yeah. Where, oh, I'll let yeah, you tell yeah, it. Yeah, 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 it, yeah. Thea's, one of Thea's, my daughter's front teeth fell out last night. Yeah. And um, obviously, at three o'clock in the morning last night, I was, I was laid in bed and I thought, Oh, I forgot, I forgot mm. to put some money under a pillow. So at three o'clock yeah. this morning, <laughs> I was running around looking for some some coins, a couple of, a couple of pound coins. I probably put a couple, yeah. a couple of quid underneath 50p, the pillow. Fifty p. Um, I think it's pound now. I think the going rate. Is, it's a, it's a, I think it's a two pound coin now. Yeah, inflation. Oh, I, I think it is. I might be wrong. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I'm looking around. I couldn't find anything. The only thing I could find was five pound note. So, no. so you got five pound note, which is quite quite a good rate for teeth. But, uh, yeah, but you're saying they rip, yeah. rip them all out today, aren't they? Yeah, so. they will. Well, I, I mean, I, so as I said, I, 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 I always tend to carry cash for various different reasons. I always tend to have an emergency 20 quid somewhere. I, I, I always, months, yeah, I always, like I, I'll always have like yeah. an emergency 20 pound on there. So, but, so during your day to day, you never use cash? I you always use cash, it's horrible. And, yeah, okay. it, the, the whole thing, I, the whole thing about cash, it's, it's just a faff because Notes are okay, but as soon as you get change, it's heavy, it's filthy. Yeah, the I, mean, if you, I mean, if you think the actual filth on money, yeah, it is it's disgusting. Scary. I think um, they were on about getting away, doing away with the ones and two Ps at some point, weren't yeah. they? I think, but it's, it's interesting. To, it's just a faff. I, th I think these days it's, it, we, we're contactless and we've chipping bit. It's just it's yeah, so easy easier. just to do it. Yeah. And it's also easy for your own records and things like that, like to keep control of your own records and stuff like that. Uh, that's one thing I found actually. So um, for things like keeping track of your expenses and things yeah, like that. Yeah, the apps and stuff. The apps are, are it's, brilliant it's immense, for that. Isn't it? um, I mean, another one, I mean, 50 years of the cash machine, I think when we started looking at this one, we, we also prompted clicked the link, it prompted another one because it's also 50 years of colour TV. Which is, yeah, I mean, and, uh, uh, interesting. So I read an article that obviously we're based in the Northwest. I think it, it was quite high, but I can't remember the number, but a high percentage of people in the Northwest are still watching Black and White Oh, they is it because the TV license is cheaper? Oh, oh, is, it, is it because it's cheaper? <laughs> Probably. Comment below. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think? But um, um, interesting one. Yeah, and then it's and the also iPhone. 10 years since the iPhone came out. It is, the first which is iPhone. And, and, I, and I have one at home. I was going to say. Yeah, I do. If you've got one at home. Get it on eBay because it's worth a fortune now. Apparently, uh, the very, very first ones. Um, but yeah, ten years and and yeah, there was ten years. When, when we're yeah, talking here about yeah, like yeah. Facebook and all this kind of thing, Instagram, all this sort of stuff, didn't even exist. No, it didn't. Didn't even really exist back then. It, I mean, it, if you think the first iPhones. You yeah. could even put apps on them. That's right. There were no apps. No, there, there no wasn't. App store. No, yeah, it was just. A, it and now we take it to. So, so, so it's like this march of technology is happening. You don't even realise it's coming. Like, you like when you were saying earlier about, like, say, drones and stuff, and like, you can't see this. And you, I think this technology just happens and you don't realise it until it's like, oh my, it's here. It's there. Yeah. Well, it's here. Oh. I mean, when you look at the TV, this is going back to the TV, what is the next thing for a TV? Because I think th 3D was sort of pitched as being the next massive thing, wasn't it? Never took off. Because you've got to wear gla anything glasses. Anything when you've got to wear glasses that make you look like an idiot. Be careful, be careful. Yeah. <laughs> no, 3D glasses make you look like I know a fool. You, yeah, they, they do. do. They they're make not, look like a fool. They're not, they weren't elegant not, glasses. They okay. weren't like that. They were not elegant no, glasses. They're, not. they're like big, horrible, chunky things that have batteries in. Yes. And it's like, no one wants to wear that. It's holograms, I think, is the next thing, isn't it? Yeah, or the, the augmented realities of so. Yeah. 
yeah, some yeah, some way of doing it where you project a TV. Maybe that's yeah, that yeah, would be cool. Yeah, um, but comments below again. You know, yeah, if, yeah. What do you think? What do you think about it? Um, interesting because we will read the comments. You know, so uh, you know if you can comment below on, on what you think. You know, sort of the next yeah. TV. Have you been be, to or, that first ever cash machine with Mark? Or have you ever <laughs> been, to have that, you uh, been there and, and used it? If you do live in North London. Can you um, petition to get one of the blue plaques saying <laughs> this was the first cash machine? Uh, I will you, the back you, your you could open campaign. it. Mark is willing to I do will the grand open opening. I will cut the ribbon. Yeah. No problem at all. So I, I hope you've enjoyed this first episode. Have you enjoyed it? I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's been good. Yeah, it's been I've good, really hasn't it? I think, it, I think yeah. we've covered some really interesting topics. Yeah. And I think we could have talked for a lot longer. Especially on the drone subject. Yes, Definitely. I think we've got, it's a sore subject, that, isn't it? It is a sore subject. Yeah. yeah. But, um, um, if you've enjoyed watching. Um, this, this, this video please do like comment share and subscribe we really do appreciate it yeah, and if there's anything you'd like us to talk about maybe in a future episode let us know let mm -hmm. us know um, thank you for watching and thank you Mark yeah, thanks for watching see you next time